Hi, this is Julie. I'm honored to bring you this special bite-sized reflection from my own epic life as a bonus to season five. The podcast has been on a pause between seasons and will begin again in May in time for Mother's Day. Until then, I invite you to catch up on episodes that you've missed, including the season five finale with my mentor and former colleague, Leslie Medine. The episode was dedicated to Ed Conboy, a special person who was a coach to both of us and led us through a process called adult reflection. Ed suffered from a stroke and passed away on March 20th, 2020. In my conversation with Leslie, I committed to writing and recording a love letter to Ed and sharing it on the podcast. It was therapeutic to write this, share it with others from my reflection circle grieving Ed's loss, and to record it here for you today. Thank you for witnessing, and I hope this invites you to think about someone in your life who you want to honor. Hi, and welcome to Mother's Quest, a podcast for moms like me ready to live our own truly epic life. I'm Julie Neal, a life and leadership coach, community builder, writer, and mom to two high energy boys who challenge me to grow into my best mom! self. Mom! <laughs> I'll be right there. Where was I? Dear Ed, as I write this, I hope that you know how loved you are, how much you are missed, and how much you've made an everlasting impact on me and so many of us. It's hard to believe it's been a year since you died. You slipped into a coma just as the world was slipping into what has felt like an alternate reality. In December, I interviewed Leslie for the podcast and held space for the ways that you impacted her. In perfect synchronicity, before I released that episode, I found an email that you wrote at the same time, at winter solstice, but 15 years ago, on the darkest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. Your words reminded me that the light we so often seek, especially in our darkest days, resides within ourselves, which was so fitting. Because one of your greatest gifts was to create reflective space, get curious and ask a powerful, illuminating question that would help me, Leslie, and so many others find our answers within. As we reach this anniversary of your death, we are reemerging in many ways. We're also approaching another seasonal milestone, the spring equinox which miraculously occurs this year today on March 20th, the anniversary of your passing. Therefore, this moment that we remember and honor you as I record this to bright sunshine and spring flowers blooming is the moment that represents a balance between light and darkness. It represents new beginnings, a festival of awakening and rebirth. I've been wondering what messages you have for us, Ed. What are you trying to tell us about darkness and light, about seasons, about the power of pause and reflection, about moving from darkness to light and seeing again in new ways? These were the words you shared in that email at the winter solstice. For the last few months, I've had the great good fortune to be surrounded by some extraordinary young people, he wrote. Gradually, they are infusing me with hope and even a little faith. Being with them has brought me to realize just how much I am dependent on them to make meaning of my life long after I'm gone. I'm aware more keenly than ever that this moment I call a lifetime is all I have right now. And that awareness is unimaginably liberating, a healing gift that lightens the load when I can stay in that awareness. I hope within this expansive moment, we all have many more little moments to share. Moments like glass beads for all of us to string together. I thought about these glass beads that you speak of and realized they are a metaphor for what you created in our lifetime with you. You brought us clarity. You brought us connection. You instilled in us 
the realization that we can be and bring our fullest selves to one another, that we can love and be loved for who we are and who we are becoming. In your presence, I learned to hold tension, to examine thoughts and feelings, even when they're uncomfortable, so that I could see and understand myself in new ways. With your coaching, I learned that when things feel the most overwhelming, it's because I'm holding too much or trying to hold too much by myself. And that so much more is possible when I welcome others in. You helped us realize that alone we are but single glass beads, but that we can create something of beauty and value when we come together. And I wonder if your spirit is somehow aware of the legacy you have left us. If you know that you brought us together again, some of us who haven't been in regular communication with one another for over a decade. After your passing, we met on Zoom every first Sunday for the entire last year, a challenging year filled with wildfires, sheltering in place, racial reckonings, and one of the most historic elections of our lifetime. We acknowledged that we could not have made it through the year without one another and without your lessons. The last time we gathered, we honored the anniversary of your passing. We imagined a virtual unveiling of your headstone and what words we would each inscribe on it. These are the words I shared and offer to you. In loving memory of Ed Conboy, who through the gift of reflection, helped me see myself so that I may also see others. I am so grateful for the opportunity to have known you, Ed, to have been coached by you, apprenticed by you, and known by you. Your legacy truly lives on in all of us. Thank you so much for listening to this special episode of the Mother's Quest podcast in honor of Ed Conboy. If this letter sparked something in you, I invite you to write a letter of your own to someone special in your life and share it with them or someone who also loved them. As always, I want to close with the Mother's Quest mantra. Seize the day. Honor your gifts. Love your people. Until next time.